Okay, welcome back. Andrew White's my name, and we're working on this painting here of the Southern Alps of New Zealand. Uh, the scene is on the way through the Haast Pass between Wanaka and Haast in the uh, South Island of New Zealand. It crosses over the Southern Alps and down into the West Coast, and the terrain goes up into some very high mountain peaks and then down into the lush green rainforests on the West Coast. Uh, putting that aside, we have um, basically brought the painting forward to the mid-ground levels. Now these are the base colours for the mid-ground. Um, they have varying tones of, of blue and a little bit of green coming through in here as we get closer. As the eye sort of moves further back, the, uh, the background tends to fade off into the distance and that of course is caused by haze in the landscape. That's what's going to give us our depth in the painting which is what I'm trying to achieve so that people can actually look into the painting. Now if you have a look at the, the um, photograph of which I'm basing this painting upon, there is a stream or a river, more, more like a river in the Southern Alps, uh, leading the eye into the mountain um, back here. Now this is um, aesthetically very, very pleasing because it leads the eye into the painting. And this is what we're going to be working on today, is this part of the painting through here, the reflections. So today we're going to focus on doing some reflections through here, at least the beginning stages of it anyway. Um, I will tidy it up later when, I'm, when I complete the painting, but that's what we're going to be doing today. So I'll give you a few tips along the way, so enjoy that. Now reflections are one of my favourite things to paint and they always involve multitudes of different colours of um, reflections of the sky and usually reflections are a, a little bit deeper, a little bit darker than the sky. And more, more highly contrasting. I've noticed that um, the brush strokes most commonly used in reflections are vertical and horizontal brush strokes and it's just a simple case of blending colour in use a nice wide brush now reflections in realism painting are almost impressionistic in their style So you can generally be quite aggressive when you apply the paint. And this dark colour through here is part of the reflections of the painting too. It is a, literally a reflection of this hillside in the water. So the, the boundary of the stream runs through there.
Lovely day in New Zealand too today. Beautiful day. Of course you can't see it in here, we're inside my studio. Thoroughly enjoyed the evening yesterday, it was a lovely sunset so I went for a walk around Mount Monganui and took some photographs. And hopefully I'll use them in a painting one day. Making you terribly jealous, aren't I? But I'm sure that you'd you can easily do the same if you'd like to. You can see what I mean about a combination of horizontal and vertical brush strokes. Might use a fan brush on this actually, just to drag that paint through and over. It's again a very useful tool is the fan brush, especially when it comes to uh, reflections. It's nice and wide and it's soft. It brings those tones down beautifully, the fan brush. Often step back from your work so you can get a good look at it. See where it's going, see how it's looking from different angles.
I love painting reflections. It's just so free and fun. As we get down to the base of the reflections through here, the blue goes very dark in tone. As and when you, and if you probably will, come across little bits of hard gristle in your paint, which may be a little bit of dry paint that's come off the lid or something, just, just of course just scrape it up and ideal to it into just a little jar down the base here where I keep a few bits and bobs, including a little jar that I can just scrape those sort of dregs into. Hopefully you're not finding my Kiwi accent too hard to understand. Then mix a little bit of Prussian blue with it. Very dominating cover colour, you don't need much of it at all. Some ultramarine blue. And see what I get from that. But I need a reasonable amount of it because I have to paint right through there. Gonna add a little bit of um, alizarin to it. Obviously this makes it a little bit mauve. Might be what I'm looking for. Sometimes hold the palette knife up to the painting so you can see where the colour's going. rather sticky so I put a little bit more lean mix into it. really darken it up a little bit and I want to be able to do it quickly and a good way is just with blue black. I don't like to use too much of blue black. I find it a little bit too stark and I, I prefer to mix my darker colours. I really don't think that black really truly exists in nature. That's
Right, this is when I'm going to turn the painting upside down so I can work on the base of it. What I am going to do while I've got the painting upside down, complete this area here, the base colours of the, uh, the bracken and the fern down through here. And that will um, completely cover the canvas. Then I can start working through the mid-grounds mid again, start working on these mountains for a start, and that'll be how this painting will progress.